Awesome. Everyone had tea yet? Hello, hello. Welcome to 40G Friday Photo Talk at YouTube. Happy New Year. Welcome to this new year. I'm Alex Kolaskov, uh, founder of uh, 40G School of Photography. Today we'll be talking about, well, in general, about continuous light and strobe and mixing them into, well, uh, working on the set uh, together. And in particular, we'll be talking about uh, Godox's S30 Lite, uh, which we're going to give away. So we have one unit, uh, brand new, unopened, and actually it's not uh, us who'll be shipping it, uh, directly from the brand unit with all the accessories. It's about, well, bigger than this box with three lenses, uh, with all kind of um, gobos, uh, gels, uh, all kind of things that I did a review a while ago. You need to check 40G YouTube, uh, recent videos, uh, you will find it there. So I'll answer all the questions uh, that you may have about uh, this light in particular and uh, how to use uh, continuous light with strobe lights. Uh, because this is something that I discovered myself. Uh, I, I didn't use it much before in that mix. I preferred always strobes, but now I kind of opened the world of continuous light uh, without giving away, giving up working with strobes. Uh, it's a cool technique and I'll show you a few things where you may need uh, to have such light. The it's not even spot, it's not snoot, uh, it's optical, optical snoot if you want, uh, with uh, projection patterns, with everything, uh, why you may need it in uh, product photography, okay? So, let me uh, take a look. I'm on the chat, okay? Uh, if uh, there is anything you always ask me, I may interrupt myself if it makes sense and kind of uh, cover things and that I'm talking about. Uh, make sure that, well, I need to make sure that you see me well, you hear me well. So, guys, if everything is fine, if sound is good, if it's not too loud or if it's not, well, if it's too loud, you know where to change it, right? If it's too quiet, uh, let me know. Anyway, please post plus if everything is fine or minus if you have any issues or better post uh, the issue that you may have with video or audio, okay? Uh, I'll check a chat and make sure that uh, you guys see me. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Robert, Andrew, Kirill. Beautiful, we have pluses, Rafal. Whew, nice. So, look to here. Now, what else we may have? Like I announced, uh, we have a special link where you can, you could, it's too late uh, to do it right now, but you could submit the image and that I'm going to review, hopefully. So, we have one hour for all this, <laughs> uh, and we need to fit in that one hour. For me, the most enjoyable part will be to talk to you, you know, uh, conversation, question, answers, whatever. For you, probably, maybe something else, like, you know, demonstration. And uh, for those of you who submitted, we have um, actually four submissions you'd like me to review, so I'll try to fit, okay? Uh, first of all, let me ask you this. Uh, did you see the review of that Godox light? Yes, no. Because I don't know how many of uh, you guys who watch me right now seen it, so I do I need to tell you about what is that, or I don't need to tell. Because in general, this is... A continuous light, LED light, relatively low power comparing to, you know, larger lights, it's 30 watt, uh, but it has some beautiful features uh, that is all in this attachment. It's an optical attachment uh, with a few lenses, uh, with replacement lens, oops, Whew. almost fell down. Uh, different lenses, actually, that supplied in that, in the kit that you're gonna review, uh, that you're gonna receive, one of you, lucky winner, uh, gonna receive uh, the whole set. Let me see, yes, 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 so no, 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 uh, mostly yes, mostly yes, if you know. 
I've seen the reviews on the, okay, okay. By the way, uh, it wasn't on the review because it happened after the review. Uh, they have these lenses. Uh, this is, for example, one of the largest 150 millimeters f2.2, really bright lens that attach here. And it's heavy, it's, it's really metal, you know, like uh, almost like a gun barrel <laughs> metal. I dropped one right from about that distance to the floor. It's concrete floor. And you know what? I have a little dent uh, on it and nothing else. I mean, it's, it's super cool. So I even checked uh, in terms of, uh, how do you call it, shockproof. It did. It, it is shockproof. But it's really heavy. So about the light and, uh, you know, the mixing it with, uh, with everything, uh, with the strobe light. What I found that there are optical snoots for strobe lights. Uh, one of them, uh, the least expensive, probably the blaster. There is, uh, how do you call it? Blaster, blaster, something blaster. Anyway, uh, our friend uh, from Israel made this uh, photo blaster. I forgot, I have it, I even have it. It's an attachment that takes lenses, let's say Canon, Nikon, whatever, they have different um, uh, mounting rings, and it can project things. There are, what else, what else? I think Bowens have something uh, with projection. I have this uh, Broncolor, it's actually, uh, where is it? No, it's not here. But you've seen it uh, probably if you've been following me. Uh, the optical snoot. The main issue with all the snoots that they ex really expensive, really, really expensive. And uh, it kind of, it uh, closes the door of using them for many photographers, especially for uh, beginners. Because for, our, uh, for beginners, it's uh, cost to functionality ratio is crucial, right? You don't need to uh, spend too much money to get some result. With this light, uh, light itself costs 250, uh, plus accessories about 150. So the whole package about $500. And it has, uh, like I said, uh, I never seen that many accessories uh, with the lenses in, uh, in such price range. So why? you ever may need to have such light with ability to focus. You can see how sharp, well, for you it may be not sharp because it's maybe out of focus a little bit, but if I stand here, uh, it will be really in focus. It's, it's super sharp, it's uh, really, it's almost like you know, optical uh, stuff, but not projection. Uh, why you may need it? There are many, areas in product photography. It's, it's definitely advanced uh, type of uh, photography where you need to put uh, a light on a very specific area on your composition or even a subject. And with, uh, with strobes without any optical snoot, it's really uh, almost impossible. You can use gobos, but it's really hard to manage and uh, hard to get uh, good uh, uh, sort of like brightness the power uh, at the smallest part uh, from the strobe because it's limited. I mean, on the strobe, you know the biggest disadvantage sort of strobe comparing to continuous light. What do you think? What do you think the, the main disadvantage in studio, in studio, talking about studio environment, working with the strobes comparing to the continuous light? It's interesting. Tell me. Yeah, price, like I said, about, about, about. 200 or 250 dollars. So, what's the biggest difference? Can't see what you get until you take the photo. Well, Gary, it's uh, with modeling light, you can see something, maybe not exactly what you're going to get, but uh, modeling light will have. Uh, can aim in real time? No, you can. Modeling light help you. Uh, what you see, what you get. Uh, Roman, yeah, but again, again, it, it's, not, it's not the biggest disadvantage. Modeling light isn't the same power. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, moving from landscape to... 
color. Uh, no, the actually strobe I think has better color uh, rendering, maybe not, but I think, uh, than most of the LEDs. Power light output, uh, Tristan, yes, bingo. Flash duration, it's actually flash duration, it's opposite, it's advantage of uh, strobe, VS continuous, but light output, Tristan, I think uh, he was first who um, answered it. By the way, guys, I'm going to interrupt myself. How are we gonna uh, draft the winner for the giveaway? If you comment, if you watch, make sure you comment at least once. But don't spam. If you kind of do lots of uh, commenting, uh, meaningless, we're gonna ban you and it won't be good. We'll be, we'll be going through the comments and choose the winner, okay? But again, don't <laughs> too much because we have team watching you closely, watching the chat. We really, uh, how you call it? Well, congruent of what, what is going on. So, Tristan was right. It's about power output. Many times when I shoot Jurli, for example, at relatively close aperture, I shoot f16, sometimes I shoot f18, even, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the strobe, even Broncolor, 3200 watt second pack. I mean, imagine, it, it's, it's a lot of power. And most of you may not have such power in a single uh, head. I may have it, uh, you know, to put all this power in a head when needed. But sometimes, with all the, let's say, gobas I may have, with all light modifiers that I need to put in front of my light, at given aperture, with ISO 100, I may not have enough power from, for that strobe, from that strobe. And especially if, uh, when, when in past I was using, my maximum power was 600 watt second from Einstein's, and before that it was even less from Alien Bees, it was like, what I can do? It, it's, it's not enough. I can touch aperture because this is my depth of field I need it for some reason, right? Uh, shutter speed doesn't help at all. You know, right, shutter speed is not what uh, gonna uh, help you to get more light from the strobe. I hope you know why. If not, you can ask, I can explain it in short. And the only thing that uh, can boost light is to raise an ISO. Sometimes it's fine from ISO 100 to 200, maybe to 400, but it's, it's not a good situation. When you shoot for client, you need to preserve maximum quality and I saw 400 or even 800, it will be some noise. Maybe a little bit, especially in past days. These days, cameras are really better in this realm. Anyway, with continuous, it's easy. You just uh, make a longer shutter speed and you can get as much power as you want. And you don't care how much power you're actually getting from the light. You can, you can use candles, really, and get the brightest picture ever. Just have, whatever, five minutes exposure time. If nothing is shaking, it will be perfect picture. So, this is something that uh, where uh, continuous light is great. You can always get as much light as need for the composition in a single shot, and it's super cool. Uh, plus, there is room for creativity you can uh, do a little bit of light painting while having long exposures. So you might have some stationary lights and you also may have some light handheld. And let's say if you have 10 second exposure, which is quite normal when I shoot with continuous light, you can do some painting. You can do something that will help you on post-production. So, so instead of doing this in Photoshop, you can do it um, in the camera, which is really fun and actually it's cool stuff. So this is why Continuous light is cool. Um, but the disadvantage is probably, I can answer it to you, is that the shutter speed. Shutter speed is long, meaning that if any vibration happening, if your, your studio is on the whatever second, third, fifth floor of some building, and especially if there is some transportation, you know, big trucks running on the streets, it will be some vibration, inevitable. Even if your camera is not shaking, you use the remote trigger, it may be some vibration, and with one second, two seconds, or whatever shutter speed, you cannot really shoot jewelry, for example. 
in such situation. Macro shots are really uh, vulnerable for the vibration, for the vibration, and uh, it will be blurry image. You you won't be getting why it's blurry, just because there is some shakiness that you may not even feel. I've seen it even on the ground. It's it's first floor. Uh, sometimes sometimes I've seen it. I don't know maybe earthquake in California whatever. <laughs> but it was blurry image when I even didn't touch the camera. I was using the uh, wireless remote. Okay, uh, now what time do we have? 30 minutes, we'll try, we'll try to fit, we'll try to do our best. So let's see, I have some uh, very simple composition. I have, uh, as well, do you see it or not? Let's maybe switch to the tree top. Uh, how do you call it? The Top, finder, and front. This is our view that we can use. So I'll show you just a little bit. Again, it may be a repetition of what I already did, but at least we can discuss it, right? It, it's uh, cool stuff. So there is a cognac. Didn't try it yet. Something new. Uh, there is a glass for this. Uh, there is uh, uh, Glenfiddich which is actually colored food coloring uh, with water and some rubbing alcohol. It smells beautiful. At least nobody want, uh, no one will drink it. And, but it looks like uh, the cognac in this case. And uh, what we can do, I can uh, show you a situation where uh, this little light uh, can be really cool, right? One of those one of those situations is when we have a label and we're shooting a moody picture, uh, something relatively dark, and we need to highlight only the label and especially part of it. So it's really a small area uh, that needs to be highlighted. It's the simplest use, but uh, this is one of the best, you know, from this optical smooth. You don't need for this any special projector, you know, any special pattern. But basically, it works. So uh, let me get, what do we have here? We have iris. You know, the coolest part of the slide is that we have this beautiful mechanical, I don't know how many blades, maybe like 20. So it's super cool. Uh, not every lens have uh, that much. Uh, we have it, and uh, we can, oh, actually, it's there. It's already there. Check it out. You see how cool it is? So this is from the second set. And you know, what I can do, I can easily aim stuff like this. It's, it's all exposed, don't look at this, by the way. Uh, looks like we need to switch to the manual focus, of course. Completely manual focus, right? We need to aim to the label. Uh, we're going to use ISO 100, no reason for more. F11 might be good. Uh, right now we have 160 watt second, uh, well, 160 watt second shutter speed. And what we're going to do, we're going to put some, some light. Let's use strobe light for the background. So we'll use two, strobe and uh, continuous light. Let me see. You know, let me, let me jump here. Maybe I'll see a little bit more of this uh, chart. Yeah, labels. Well, Oliver, I'm not really agree that labels are difficult always. Uh, only labels that are glossy. If it's a glossy label or glass, uh, some... Um, glossy like words on it, you know, text. This is where it gets nasty. Yeah. Uh, by the way, guys, if you interested to explore this in depth, I can uh, show you, there is a workshop that we did a while ago, uh, Christmas photography. 
Uh, let me, then I'll help you a little bit on this, uh, with this. Yep. So you can see, uh, this is the image that we did, and it was a mix of two, two strobes, or one strobe, I don't remember, at least one strobe and two, um, Godox has 30 lights. Color it, and it, it was really cool experience. Uh, so for such shots, uh, it's, it's really nice. Let me. Uh, the light, the light, the light. Uh, where do we have? I'm kind of missing my one little thing. Well, let's use, let's use this one. It'll be sort of easy. So I'm going to put some strobe here, okay? Oh, want to show you? I better show you this. It's it will be cooler. You may like it. Do it yourself. <laughs> Adapter. It was the conversation on Facebook, guys, it was conversation on Facebook on 40G group. If you're not on that group, uh, you better join. I'll show you something. And uh, Roman, I think Roman Soprano, right? That was you, uh, raised questions, question about adapters uh, for Bowens, Bowens to uh, different um, strobe lights. I don't remember what it was in the question. For me, the question is for Broncolor, how I can mount uh, Bowens to Broncolor. There is no adapter that I know about. And uh, what I did, it was super cool, super easy. I have this Broncolor Picolite with the snoot, so basically it's a tube. I put some uh, double-sided tape with some, actually, attachment for that thing. And it fits super cool, almost like a Profoto-like uh, mount to the, it's inside, inside. Uh, Lena, can we switch to the uh, full view? At least the front view. So it will be a little bit more visible. Yep, thank you. So it fits, and especially with this not heavy, it's plastic uh, aperture version one uh, Fresnel lens. You see how cool it is? That's it, it works beautiful. I was thinking how I can mount this Fresnel lens uh, to Broncolor, and uh, here we go. So I have this Fresnel lens. Let's put it on. And I think the main disadvantage of this particular light, that modeling light is off, uh, I mean, it's burned. Uh, let's see. Okay. Let's have some gel on it. Whatever it could be, something blue. Maybe, or maybe not blue. What will work nice, I guess. All of our gels. Here we go. So with that cognac, it might be something either blue or green or actually relatively. Okay. So we have one strobe light, it fires, hopefully, yes, it does, and one continuous light. And if I just shoot it like this, uh, actually, wow, I didn't expect it, 1 60 of a second, uh, this is my regular shutter speed for working with strobes. But what happened, as I can see that, you know, this little light at maximum power gets job done. You can see even the, the strobe on the side, but basically we have uh, something that already looks cool. Of course, to get it uh, brighter, let's say, question again, question, let's see how uh, many of you uh, really understand well a relationship when we work with mixed lights. Guys, if we need to increase brightness of that spot on the label, and this is already maximum power of our light. What do I do? Tell me.
tell me what do I do now to make label look brighter. I saw. No, I, I, I'm not going to touch I saw because uh, background will be brighter. Uh, I don't need it, even though I can, let's say, lower uh, the power. But I want to shoot ISO 100 to preserve maximum quality. What do I do? Exactly, long exposure time, uh, reduce shutter speed. Guys, you are perfect. Exactly, I need to uh, make exposure longer. A longer exposure has no effect on the strobe light. Only continuous light effects, because strobe, why actually, why, why? Oh, good question, answer. Why, when we change our shutter speed somewhere between, let's say, one second and X sync, it's not affecting the amount of light that we're getting from the strobe. Why? I saw, I mean, sorry, uh, shutter speed 160 of a second or 100 of a second or 50 of a second or 130 of a second. The same, it will be the same brightness on the background in my case. Why is this? Flash duration is much less than the shutter speed. Uh, carry, didn't go, guys, listen to carry. <laughs> yes, exactly. Flash duration is about, uh, actually, I can read, I can tell you exactly. Burn color tells me this. Uh, it's 1500 of a second. So all the light comes into 1500 of a second. And if shutter speed is longer than this, the open, the time that shutter is open longer than this, I mean, all the light will go through it and that's it. So. Uh, let's uh, change to 100 of a second. By the way, I, sh I have f11 on the camera. If I change, let's say, to f16, will be any change on the background, brightness of the background, if I will change from f11 to f16? Will it be any change or not? Yes, label will be darker. What about background? Yes, yes, exactly, yeah, of course, because uh, aperture affects any type of light. It doesn't matter, strobe or not strobe, it's not about time, it's about opening, right? It's about physical uh, hole where that light gets in, get through. So it doesn't matter, it affects uh, both lights. Anyway, one hundredth of a second, and uh, let's do one fifty of a second. So definitely it gets Brighter, brighter, and brighter. You can see, oops. Oops. Oh, I didn't clean it. So 160, this is 160, this is 100, uh, this is uh, 50 of a second. Uh, huge difference, right? And of course, to make it look nice, uh, let's say this particular composition, uh, what can we do? We can put some light, right? We need to put some light uh, from either side. And actually, I'm thinking to put light from that side. And uh, the light would be a, str uh, a strip light, strip box. You can see it. Lena, I think we need to see the, the whole picture, uh, the front now. Thank you. So this is the the light that creates what? If you turn it on, what it's doing? Fast. <laughs> you don't see it through this. This is why I'm asking. It creates reflection, right? It creates a long reflection on any any glass, any uh, cylindrical glossy subject. You don't e even need to think about you know lighting setup. It should be like a just rule for you. If there is a glass, like a bottle, any bottle that is uh, glossy, or glass or anything that way, sort of cylindrical shape, you put speed light 
next to it, somewhere on the side. Right? Again, it depends. I'm not sure, guys, how many of you has, you know, what kind of experience you have in product photography, but this is really like you start from this. Um, let's switch to the three thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So when you're taking a picture, uh, we see the reflection from it, right? On the glass and on the bottle. And what else I can do to make it look better, to make it look nicer? No gradient yet. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, quite, quite different level, I can see. <laughs> yes, gradient, gradient. What is the gradient? What is that? What is the gradient? Gradient is what makes a shape. I'm always kind of showing this. Uh, again, this is for, for beginners. Uh, drawing circle. Uh, Lena, let's um, show my table. Yeah, the, the stop plus uh, I mean, review. review. Mm -hmm. OK, so. We work with 2D media, right? Uh, 2D mini media, it's a screen. It, uh, it's not 3D yet, so it's just a screen, monitor screen or print or whatever we see the photo. It's 2D. How we make 2D into 3D? Because circle is 3D, I mean, it's 2D, right? But uh, the ball is a 3D. So how do we draw it? Uh, hopefully. Then not that ball. <laughs> Just where is football? Isn't oh here it is. Um, uh, this one, talking about this one. We create a gradient, and immediately the circle become a ball. This is how we see it because of the shadow and lights and everything. Gradient does the same. It's uh, how you call it. Not physically, I forgot the world. It's crazy. The world that. Uh, so we mimic the light that we see in real life. And we see the shape. Uh, always we see it. Where is my. Oh, here it is. Uh, we see it with the gradient. So for this, we need a diffuser. Okay. And, uh, well, we need uh, something else to hold the diffuser, right? So here we go. The best friend of any photographer is what? Is a C-stand. Why C-stand? Not any other stand. Who can tell me why C-stand is great, guys? Who knows the secret? Who stopped using C stands over regular stands? Wrong side though. Tell me, tell me, wh why do you like C stand? What's so special about that C stand? Huh? while I'm mounting it. I want to mount it like this. Okay. I'm gonna check in a moment what you have for me. So, C stand and the light behind it, right? Light behind, like this, or how we put it? And shoot. Uh, we need to raise uh, power of the light. Would you agree, right? Because diffuser eats some power. We have this image. It looks a little bit better, right? Uh, than the previous one, but. Lena, switch to the three cameras, the viewfinder. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, 
Mm -hmm. Two, yep. Uh, actually, three. You know, we need three. This one. Yeah. <coughs> so this was the previous one. And then we got this. It looks better. Would you agree? C-stand, the best friend of photographers. Right, right, right. C-stand, because of the legs, it's heavy and small. It has small legs comparing to the stand uh, that uh, the same weight, the same weight ratio, uh, rating uh, stand. C-stand is really small and legs on the different height. So you can stack few stands really close to each other, just overlapping legs. They're not interfering with each other. And this is the best solution ever. This is a, you cannot do with just regular stands because they will kind of get legs, you know, on the way. <laughs> this is why they cost more, but of course not because of this. It's because of the material. Uh, they heavy, they, uh, they hold lots of weight uh, with the small footprint. So, <laughs> hold more than humans without being tired. <laughs> Danny, exactly. <laughs> That's one of the things. But, you know, uh, humans are great because they can move when you talk to them. Hey, move to the right. Boom, it's ready. So you, it should be just bigger. <laughs> Powerful humans helping you. Anyway, uh, it's, it's a big difference, right? You kind of see, oh, it's cool. It's, it's a big difference. However, this is wrong. This is one of the biggest uh, mistakes that beginners do when they discover the beauty of the diffuser like wow it's so cool yeah it's, it's definitely it's kind of it's nice and I've seen so many pictures uh, guys posting like this uh, by the way we forgot our light uh, so so many pictures guys posting and saying it's cool but it's not who tell me what, what's the mistake of this image what, what's wrong with what is that and while you're thinking about it let me do one more shot. Okay, this is the correct exposure. By the way, I supposed to shut down the lights, these video lights, whatever ambient light for the studio, because it affects my picture. Ideally, ideally, I need to shoot like this. Okay, this is how we're supposed to shoot. It will be slightly different. We can check between this and this. But you see how little difference is? Uh, just because this light and this distance so much more powerful than, than uh, ambient light, then it's fine. But just be careful, shooting with continuous lights requires really dark studio. Anyway, what's wrong with this image? What's wrong? A reflection on the glass. Refraction, no, reflection actually. Refraction, it's fine. The position of the diffuser um, takes away the shine. No sharp cutoff. Exactly, exactly. First thing I learned from videos, I said that you need to edge light. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. Guys, you, you, you wise, you wise people. I'm so happy to, you know, to have you ah, in my life. Beautiful. It just amazing feeling. So, yes, with this it looks nice, but it shows the different surface. It's, it's not correct surface for this material. The material is glossy. And it looks nice, but it looks like it's matte glass. Have you ever seen matte cognac glass? Well, maybe, maybe, but it's not what I have there. Mine is glossy. Mine is glossy and boom, it's not gonna work. To make it glossy, the biggest thing that we uh, the, the biggest difference between glossy in, and matte, any surface, anything, that glossy always reflects sharp, well, always reflects how it's, it's not even sharp, it reflects the real subject, the real shape. If the shape is sharp, well, most of the subject has relatively kind of sharp edges, whatever, right, all around us. A reflection from the glossy part will be sharp edge, and matte surface would never give you anything sharp. It will diffuse it. Semi-matte, semi-glossy will be the same. And this is biggest difference. And we need to make sure that there is sharp cut off. This is what I teach all the time. How do we do this? How do we do this, uh, this with this lighting setup? 
since the glass simply reflects what we have projected here, it's a projection from the diffuser. You understand? It's just a projection. Whatever I put there, if I put that light, it will be on the glass. You understand this, right? Boom, it's a projection. Yeah, I'm not shooting the light. It's just a, uh, let me show you. Like, like this. So you see that spot, right? It's just a projection from this spot. And the spot actually has relatively sharp edges, as you can see. So we need to do something with the with this shape, the shape of the light that we have behind. And the best way is to just touch it. I'm not sure if you guys see in it. I hope you do. If not, tell me. We do touch our diffuser. Uh, let me see. I don't see, for some reason I don't see the result of this, but just because too bright. And we do shoot. So this is what makes sharp edge, right? This is sharp because we're touching it with the diffuser, I mean with the strip box, and the rest is uh, gradient because light, uh, of the light fall off, because we, we have the uh, angle, right, uh, between the diffuser and uh, the strip box. Question, uh, this is about physics. Uh, that probably you learn in seventh grade or sixth grade. Uh, what do we do to move the edge, the, that sharp cut of line, to the edge of the glass and actually closer to the edge of the bottle? Because it will look better just that way. What do we do? What, what do I need to do? We'll do segment the post video on editing this image. Uh, we're not do, going to do it today. Actually, we're running out of time, but we'll extend it a little bit, right? A little bit. Okay, we approve for extension. Uh, but it's a good idea, actually, to edit this image. We just need to bring Artem Pisarevsky, our uh, Photoshop guru, brilliant guy, what he's doing in Photoshop all the time, you know, on the, because he's doing, uh, when we do review for workshops, for uh, professional membership workshops, when people submit the images. Uh, he's doing in real time some adjustments during the review and it just all, all the time I, I see this like wow He just do this 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 and boom. It's a different picture. It's amazing on JPEG that people submit not even you know the raw file Anyway, we'll bring him and we might have another live uh, Show where he'll show you some Photoshop tricks especially on this image, but I'll try to do my best Right in the camera as always I hate Photoshop no, of course I'm not hate Photoshop, I just didn't know Photoshop that well to use it. Anyway, move light further back, move glass backwards. Uh, Jill, glass backwards is not going to help if I move glass backwards, even though I don't like doing this because it will change my composition, it will be the same. You see backwards or front of the camera, it's not going to help. Why? Because it's, mo it's, it's little, too little to be noticed, the difference. We need to move. This edge, I don't know, do you see it or not? Not really. Maybe you can get that camera. Uh, actually, it's okay, you know? It's okay, I'll show it here. It's visible here. So this edge needs to be there because of the law of reflection. This is super, super important to understand. When you have cylindrical, one second, maybe I'll show you something really cylindrical. Oh, here it is, my best. Mm. <laughs> my best, my best tool to show something. Okay, Lena, I, I need front camera. So, let's imagine that this is our light source. And this is our, uh, I'm so sorry, it's dirty. Anyway, but it's glossy. I have right now strip boxes here. And look at the reflection. You see where it is, right? It gets somewhere here. If I move it, well, it, it moves, but not that much, because the 
distance here, you've seen it's not that. If I move it here, look at the reflection. It gets to the edge. Right now, it's on the edge of this guy, right? And look at how far it is. It's behind. It's not even on the side. If it's on the side, it will be somewhere here. If it's really behind, it starts getting on the edge. Just because of the low reflection, this is what it reflects. The light comes from here. Not from here, not from there. From here. OK? To get it on the edge. And once you understand this, it's actually all about law of reflection. If you really understand how light, where it came from, where it comes from, uh, on anything that you shoot in studio, it will be so easy to build the lighting setup and solve any issue with reflections or absence of reflections or whatever, if you will understand where it's come from. So this is, again, this is some of the crucial knowledge. Let's move this guy over here. Uh, actually, it should be under the table. This light uh, is supposed to be under the table, talking about background light. But we can use it for now like this. <clears throat> so I moved it to the really behind. And look at this, right? This is what we have. Do we see it? Yes, beautiful. So it moved. Of course, it became compressed. It's not that long talking about gradient. And we can kind of play uh, with it a little bit. Uh, we can even get out slightly from the edge because we can use edge of the diffuser to be, you know, cut off line. And in this case, we can have a little bit more light over here. Let's try to do this uh, to increase the power. Since I moved it away from the diffuser, I need to compensate it with additional power, right? Because light fall off square low. So we got this. Let's check. Between this and this. Well, a little bit smoother. A little bit smoother uh, gradient. Smooth. How do you pronounce it? <coughs> Some of the words in English gets me crazy. So this is basically how you shoot this composition. And with that light, you see it works perfectly well. We can always have one more light. Uh, I'm not sure if I have time. And uh, light handy, really. Actually, we can try if I will find the rest. One second. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where it is. Let me see if I will find the power. Here it is. Uh, what we can try to do to finalize this image a little bit is this. We can use, uh, this is what I showed on the workshop. You may like it uh, to know it as well on the ProClub workshop. Uh, if you want to kind of get it into all details, you can always, you know, subscribe and check what is going on. But what I want to show you is Sometimes we need to highlight the liquid without basically highlighting the rest of the stuff that we may have. Only some part from behind. Same thing, you need to have a little spot that you can aim only on that little thing to get things uh, interesting. I'm not sure how it will work here, but let me try. Let me try to do this. Let me grab, actually I'm gonna grab the one more assistant, photographer's best friend, right? I'll put this light where it's supposed to be, under the table. This is the best place for the background light, if you were wondering. Ideally, it should have a modern light, but again, a lamp is went down. This, um, you know, little lamps, 250 watt, you did, you do a little of vibration and they, boom, they gone. So let's have one more light, the same as 30 Godox light, optical snoot with the lens. I think it's even the same lens. <clears throat> let's have it behind, a little bit behind. And what I'm going to do, if I will manage to turn it on, <laughs> Uh, 
I'll try. So maximum power. Uh, you can see, right, you can see the light. It's uh, really cool. I want to have uh, iris on it so I can really manage the size of that light, right? So I'm going to stick iris. And you can guess where I'm going to put it. What I'm going to highlight. Oh, what is this? I have some other stuff here. Some, some mesh, sort of like ingredient. Anyway, uh, let's have it a little like this. And I will try to hit only the glass. And only the bottom of the glass, actually. It may be actually not as good as I'm thinking, but I can try. So, little pin on the glass. You see it there, right? Mm, do we have any difference? Well, not much. And probably due to the brightness of light, because we do see something on the real life, right? I mean, we see that, hey, there is some highlights at least going on. Let me do maybe a little bit more like this. Maybe even with a little bit larger opening. Yeah, maybe somewhere like that. I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but at least I'll try. Okay, so here we go. It didn't really touch anything else. We don't have a reflection from this light on the bottle. At least I don't see it. But this is without light. You know, just, just cognac. And boom, this is, if you crop it, it's some highlight. Again, with little spot, with a gel, orange gel, which will enhance color of that, uh, the liquor as even more, we have it. Of course, there are different things that we need to highlight here, but I'm not going to uh, dive deep into this. We have tons of workshops uh, for, for this. I think now it's time to talk to you guys. Wow, what is that? Questions. Thank you. Okay. So we have questions. Let's talk. Guys, let's talk about uh, things that you ask me. I'll try to do my best. Uh, you can continue asking questions. Would you ever put a silver cut out shape behind the cognac in order to make it glow? Of course, yes, of course, it's, it's, it's a beautiful technique. Behind the cognac or behind the bottle, if you need to highlight the bottle, tons of stuff like this. Uh, but the purpose of this uh, little workshop is to show you why I'm so small. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I mean, is to show you how you can use that light, that spotlight uh, in this. Of course, you can, you can do uh, way better than we did, you know. Um, but what I like with this little highlight, that it's like little sun. It's not, uh, you know, soft glow of the liquid as when you put uh, the screen, silver screen behind it, right? It's a little bit, it's more interesting and it's like, ooh, how you got this? This is uh, one of the techniques that, again, may put uh, your images slightly separate from the rest of, you know, the way that people shoot. It's important to be, you know, to be different. In this world, when there are so many talents all around, you need to really find <laughs> the way to be, to be different. Anyway, uh, question. Uh, if the mask tool on this light is useful, then uh, burn doors or flags for modeling light? Well, uh, of course, it's, um, it's more useful because uh, on, on, you know, on burn doors and all this, you can't really focus. It, it, it limits the light, but it's still like a soft spot, which is nothing wrong with it if you need soft spot. Here, uh, the best thing on any optical, why optical, why optical uh, uh, snoot is so unique at some point, it's because we can focus it on a very small area with very sharp, uh, very precise, very, very big precision, I would say, right? Precisely. Uh, you cannot do this without 
Good. Like button, yes, yes, thank you, thank you, Helen. Guys, if you like this video, it's beautiful, it should be there on, on the whiteboard. Like this video, please. We need to tell YouTube that it's good, so they know that we are good and next time uh, more people will see it and more people will see it, more things for giving away we will get from vendors and guys will receive more stuff like this. Okay, if you would have instead of uh, how much, 76 uh, as now, subscribers, 76,000, but if you would have uh, 7,700 subscribers, we probably will give away 10 of these. So like it, please. It helps everyone. Now, you understand, right? Optical is about precision. Any optical light. Barn doors and everything is just limiting the spread. But it's a little bit different. Uh, would the ambient light affect a longer exposure? Yes, of course, it affects, as I showed you, but because of the difference, it's not that uh, visible here. But when I shoot myself, I mean, when I shoot not uh, on the, in front of the camera, I turn off all these lights. I have a little light somewhere in the studio, where, you know, a little ambient light just to see all things around. Uh, I turn off modeling light for the strobes. It should be off. I don't need that yellow color from them. It's completely different color temperature. So ideally when I mix uh, continuous light and strobes, strobes, one, once I start shooting, once I, a light and stuff is ready, I turn off modeling light. You don't need it to affect the color balance and everything. <clears throat> well, what tripod system I use? Uh, well, this is not a tripod. Uh, this is huge. It's called uh, stand. It's camera stand. It's uh, on the wheels and it weighs probably well, more than 100 pounds. It's a beautiful stuff. It's a column uh, where you know we can move stuff. Uh, it's it's cool. The the disadvantage that it's heavy. You can move it easily uh, away from the studio. It's expensive, unless you will find somewhere in your town or city uh, on a Craigslist, you know, second hand. It's hard to sell them because nobody can bring. You know, it, it's so expensive to ship. So you can pick up uh, for like 10x lower price than the original one. But it's super cool for the studio. It's it just, it's a tank vs, uh, uh, how do you call it, peasant, the guy who's running. So tank or the guy with the gun on the battlefield. It's, it's, it's very different, comparing to the regular tripod. Uh, where those two spots on glass are from? Two spots, what kind of spots? Two spots, I, huh? Yeah, most likely if you see something on the glass, uh, especially if you see it uh, like this, of course it's a uh, video light. This we have two lights uh, in the studio. Uh, so it's visible. If you use a telephoto lens, uh, it will be better. I use 50 millimeters uh, non-macro lens. This is not the kind of product photography lens. It's just uh, f1.8 uh, Zeitz, Zeitz, Zeitz lens uh, that well, I use it just because to show you a little bit, you know, uh, wider look. Telephoto or macro, 100 millimeters, 90 millimeters or longer, it's okay. But one thing, it makes things flat. When we use longer lens, it makes things flat. You don't see that uh, perspective distortion, even little one. 50 millimeters gives you just a little bit. but. It's, it's like hard to tell, but you can see the difference. You can feel almost like you feel the difference, but if you don't know, or if you're not a photographer, you don't understand why. Ideal, we need to shoot if you have some bottles and stuff like this to make it uh, more volumized to see the opening on the glass, you know, that little oval that we see on the glass on top. This is important. Never shoot it straight. It should never have anything gla any glass with, uh, you know, a horizontal line on top that's Never, it should be oval. Anyway, uh, wider lens helps. 35 millimeters might be too much, too much distortion. 50, 55, 60, really cool at this distance and at, for this uh, um, composition, okay? Uh, and 100 millimeters on X-T3. Beautiful camera, I love it. I recently got uh, the video camera in the studio. I love it, that Fuji, wow. It's a real camera. Sony is great, but it's like gadget. Buttons, you know, stuff. 
Anyway, 100 millimeters on crop sensor, it's probably 160 millimeters, unless you already converted. So it's really long lens. I wouldn't use it. I would use it for macro stuff, for if you, if you can do it, for jewelry. Longer lens is better. We don't need any distortions, we just need to have our camera further away so we can put stuff around the jewelry, talking about light modifiers, you know. But on this, no, it, it, it will be harder. Uh, what else? Uh, by the way, if someone join us, guys, we're almost ready to draw a winner for Godox, okay? We're giving away one light, uh, one Godox unit with all accessories. By the end of this video, like this video, comment, because we need comments uh, to get the winner. We can, uh, I'll scroll it and just blindly hit uh, someone who will receive this unit. Uh, likes are not, well, it's required. I'm, I'm kidding, it's not required, but uh, please like the video. It will help us uh, to get uh, more stuff to give away uh, you next time. So be with me. Right now, questions and answers, okay? And looks like we may not have time, unfortunately, to review submissions unless we're gonna sit two hours here. We'll see if you guys will, <laughs> me, me, me. Uh, unless you, you ask me to be so. Uh, so, question and answers, uh, spots. Uh, do we always use round spot light on label? No, no, no. I mean, it depends what you need. Uh, round is usually oval, right? Like mine uh, right now. And uh, it kind of looks nice. I, I like the way that, you know, label highlights with sort of like a vignette with darker corners. Uh, but the beauty of this thing that it has uh, in terms of accessories, beside having really nice barn door, by the way, it's built really well. Everything is metal, gun metal, heavy and strong metal. I never seen good dogs at that quality. Really, I have few good dogs light. I wasn't a big fan of good dogs before, but this light kind of spoiled me. Anyway, they have these little things uh, that uh, can be used in conjunction with the iris or separately that again, completely focusable. So you can have really, really beautiful sharp line. Uh, if let's say we open this and uh, well, not sure if you can stick it. It may be not enough, let me see. Maybe I need to pull the iris and stick these guys. I'll show you in a moment. So, uh, take a look. You see how you know precise this, it can be like that. It can be, no, I'm gonna sit in a moment and I'm gonna sit, that's probably fine. That's fine to be. So we can have it like this. Uh, yeah, let's show the last picture. <clears throat> it's getting hot. Okay, so we went from uh, from this to this. This is the you know, long and nice uh, line like that, right? Looks cool too. Uh, Will this uh, video be posted uh, to watch again? Of course, yes, yes. It will be all on YouTube channel under live show. It will be forever over there. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Okay. Uh, let's do, let's see what chat here. I believe the light comes with a battery package as well uh, versus the non-battery version you are using. Well, this is battery version. No, no, no. Uh, with this light, they have, come on, they have a battery. Uh, well, they not supply it. It's not part of the kit, but here it is. Battery sits here. They have a specific, uh, yeah, uh, attachment for the battery. And uh, they have a cord that probably I can pull if it's here, if not. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let me see. Yeah, it is. Uh, and it can run on battery. 
And it can run even from USB, which is really unusual. They have a connector, they have a cable for USB. And uh, let's pull this AC and stick it the battery. And uh, try battery, maybe not charged. Actually, it is, it is charged. We have some stuff, so we have it. You see, it's running. It's bright and nice. However, it will be five times less brightness uh, when it runs on battery. I think about five times less, which is still okay. Which is still okay uh, for out of studio use. Yes, oh, three times, thank you. Thank you, Hank, uh, it's three times less. So 10 watt instead of 30 watt. I'm wondering actually why, because the battery, may, maybe this um, Sony mount batteries, they're not really powerful to output 30 watt, maybe because of this, because I don't see any other reason why it wouldn't. <coughs> uh, does the magnification of the lens matter? Well, magnification, if you're talking about lens, are you talking about lens on, for these uh, Godox or for lens on the camera? Because for the, for the Godox, it's different lenses and the difference is uh, how wide we are getting the spot, basically the... It's all about focusing. So you see how huge spot it is. It's, it's a large spot because it's 60, I think 60, how much? No, it's 85 millimeters, and before it was 150 millimeters. So it's just wider. Well, same as for the camera, right? And uh, uh, talking about the camera, wider lens gives you a little bit more interesting look because of perspective distortions. Uh, things may look a little bit more interesting. I use wider lenses for, uh, for compositions with you know, multiple items relatively large. If it's about feet, two feet, at the size, the composition that I shoot, I use wider lens. Uh, it look better. <clears throat> 102 likes. Thank you. Can we have 150 likes, likes guys? Well, how many people watch us? <laughs> you can't like us two times, right? Anyway. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Being able to see my exposure uh, through uh, viewfinder on my Sony would make... Uh, composite million times easier. I don't have enough gear to capture that looks good shoot, so I'm always moving lights. Yeah, you know, my uh, viewfinder, you've seen it, right? Probably you've seen it. This is my viewfinder. This is my real-time viewfinder. You actually see the same thing that uh, when I broadcast, right? You see it. Um, but yeah, this, this monitor, it's, it's not, yeah, it's not much visible. Uh, it's just a monitor, 4K monitor connected. You know, it's, it sits on the same stand. This is why this uh, camera stand is great, because it probably I can sit on top of this and everyone will be happy. I mean, it can withstand any, <laughs> any weight. Uh, so it's connected, it's like one unit. I can move it all around, everything's connected. I can even connect a laptop, but I don't do this because when I touch laptop, let's say if I want to do remote shooting, the whole thing is start a little bit trembling. I don't need this. The idea of remote shooting, I do on the laptop something without touching the camera at all. So sometimes I shoot remotely, but laptop is on the table, not on the stand. Uh, <clears throat> yes, 20 more likes, please. Uh, is it possible to mount some gels on that light? Yes, of course, we, we mount in the gels, right? We, one of the light, the light that was behind with gels, it's, uh, it has uh, orange gel. This is why it's so nice, you know, that cognac looks so nice. Uh, on the kit that you, one of you will receive, it will have two sets of gel. One is for uh, color temperature adjustment, so it's kind of either greenish, bluish, or um, kind of warmish. And I don't like it, I mean, I don't need it. Uh, it's more for video editing, you know, for video lights. I like this creative kit with all kind of gels from pink to dark blue, whatever. So yes, yes, definitely yes. Uh, do you prefer mirrorless or DSLR? Mirrorless, of, uh, of, well, not of course. Uh, mirrorless, I had even the video about three years ago where I was saying why DSLR is dying uh, when, I, when I told actually uh, that there is no reason to have a mirror anymore with this technology that we have uh, because it makes camera bulkier, you know, more stuff moving, more stuff can break. 
However, uh, I see that you know uh, DSLR still has advantages, especially in focusing stuff um, and the high-speed shooting and focus. So there are some, but it's dying. You, you understand that it will, it will be gone at some point. Mirror will be taken away because the mirror was needed only because we have a film. We had a film before, and we cannot uh, we cannot see through the film. Back then, right? Right now we can see for, through the sensor basically. So, <coughs> if there is any fan noise, I'm thinking about video. Well, there is a fan, but the noise is very quiet. I mean, it's it's it. You need to stick it next to you to your mic to, to see it, to to hear it. it. It's really quiet. It's um, the same basically power of noise that I have from uh, aperture lights that actually I use in the studio. Uh, that there is a fan, but it's so silent. So I, again, it's da it's uh, relatively cold here. Maybe in the summer it will be a little bit more noisy, higher uh, RPM. We'll see. But I think it's it's really good. Uh, what they call tem uh, temperature or good dogs? It's funny they have this. Um, uh, it's 560. Uh, I mean, sorry, 5,600 K. Uh, they even have this uh, indicator showing the. Uh, the color temperature, but it's not, you can't change it, so I, uh, no reason for this. But anyway, 5600K. Perfect temperature. <laughs> I'm still going. Oh, it's, it's already 20 minutes late. Okay, guys, guys, guys. So we're not going to, I, I'll show you one second. Let's do this. Uh, let's uh, jump on this. Okay, uh, this is what I'm going to do. For those of you, thank you so much, who, uh, you guys who submitted the image. Actually, uh, Abdurrahman, where is the shot? Uh, so we have uh, one from John, from our student, John. Uh, hello, we have that one image uh, that it was to be reviewed. Wow. Uh, then another image, uh, actually, set of images from uh, Janine. <gasps> Janine, oh, hello, dear. dear. So, we'll talk to you. What? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes, yes, we're going to draw it. And uh, so, we have two images to review. Is it CGI? Yes, it's CGI, of course. Janine is uh, sort of, how you call it, like a photographer who is not a photographer. She's using Cinema 4, 4D to, to do all this. But the beauty is that the same lighting, you need to understand where to put your lights, even if it's a virtual environment. And Janine is, uh, well, no, I'm quiet. I'm not going to tell you our secrets. Um, and one more light, uh, well, one more shot from this. We're going to, I'm going to review it, but not right now, guys, just because uh, nobody can see that long. I'm going to review it and post the video. So you guys who submit it, thank you. I will review it just for you. <laughs> and for those who get back, get back to the forum to, to watch my review. It's open for every, anyone. So uh, now, now it's time to draw winners. And for the winners, Guys, uh, there is some rules, right? Uh, you should be uh, over 18 years old to participate. Otherwise, if not, uh, we just cannot, uh, well, send you anything because of the walls. It's not because I'm so, uh, you know, jealous or whatever. It's just the law that we can, uh, you should be uh, to participate in such uh, giveaway 18 uh, years plus. And then uh, also it will be some documents that you need to sign, but it's, it's about the winner. How are we going to draw the winner? I'm going to scroll. You will see it, how I'll do it. We'll get a chat, and I'll get a chat in front of me. Uh, I'll be scrolling back and forth, and then click on someone. Uh, if I do, I just check how I click. Huh. Oh, there is, OK, there is like uh, this. Yeah, you see it. Uh, the, let's do even like that. So nothing will be disturbing your view. We do have this little, you see this uh, three dots 
on the right side and whatever three dots will be, it will be the winner, okay? To prove that you are the winner, you will have to make a screenshot. I'll show you what kind of screenshot you need to make. Uh, one second. Uh, two, two, two. You need to click on the... Uh, one second, one second, guys. Not that easy. Uh, you need to show that this is your channel, right? Because <laughs> otherwise it will be uh, many, many... Uh, I'll show you in a moment. Winners. Uh, you need to prove that uh, you own this. Okay, here it is. So let's say you are on YouTube watching us, like, like I'm doing right now, okay? You're watching us, like here. And you have this little icon on top right corner. One second, you see it. Okay, you need to click this icon. So we'll see some of the information. Take a screenshot of it. The, actually, the whole thing like this, I need to see the whole, okay? The screenshot should be somewhere like, like this, okay? And send to admin at 40g.com. Admin, A-D-I-M-I-N, at 40g.com. Send the screenshot with your details. We'll contact you, we'll get your address, and uh, you'll receive the light. Okay, you got it? Good. So, uh, watching, um, yes, mobile is fine. Well, you comment, right? So you can be uh, the winner. You don't need to do it right now, kind of. Uh, you can, well, it's better to do it uh, sooner than later because if somebody will fabricate your screen, you, you, uh, you better <laughs> <you'll> be <laughs> at least first to send us. Um, Yes, admin 40 gcom let me show this. Uh, yes, this is correct, admin at 40 gcom mm, Mobile is fine. You take a screenshot of something that will prove that you logged in into that account that was commented, commenting, okay? This is what we need to know. So let's be quiet. Don't post, post new comments, okay? And uh, I'm gonna... Uh, Trembling. Do I have any whiskey to drink? Hmm. It was a tea. Okay. Not watching. Scroll up, scroll down, scroll up, scroll down, scroll up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Uh, oh, this is good. No, 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 no. Or this one. No, no, no. Okay, this one. <laughs> it's funny, uh, it was not three things, but it's definitely on the comment. I see what kind of comment it is. And we have Ryan L. Imagery. Congratulations, Ryan. You won Godox S30 Lite with accessories pack. And whoo! And now 10 more. Kidding. Again. Let's have 100,000 more subscribers and we'll do 10 more next time. Uh, because vendors will give us easily, right? Uh, more lights uh, to do. By the way, we do have one more giveaway coming. It's different stuff. So just watch us. So Ryan, uh, again, I'm highlighting this. I don't think I can do anything except ban you. I'm not going to ban you. Oh, go to channel, I can even open uh, Ryan's channel to make sure, ooh, Ryan, nice. Uh, I mean, the nice picture. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Ryan, this is your channel. Get back to us with the screen that will prove that you are the owner, okay? Admin at 40d.com. And again, congratulations, congratulations. So, we do have the winner. Now, Officially, we can end our live talk. Uh, we did uh, hour and a half almost. It was great. It was close. <laughs> well, do we have? Okay, cool. We have Ryan here. Beautiful. So, uh,
Whiskey is also to win. You know what? No, I can. I, I don't know about uh, legal stuff. I would love to give away that. You know that Martel. Martel is a beautiful. I think it's 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 cool cognac, but I can. Probably it's not a good idea to give away alcohol online, and no, even we're not kids. We're not um, 18 years old. But anyway, we'll do more. You know, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Uh, we'll be uh, doing more. Okay. <laughs> Can you ship whiskey? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I probably, uh, as the company, we can't really ship whiskey. It's probably not a good idea. As uh, Alex Kalasko can probably ship anything, well, again, not sure, but as Alex, I can do more than uh, as the head of the company, you understand it, right? Okay, uh, yes, uh, so thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Uh, let's uh, jump to the uh, to, 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 to what? To the full view, right? I did. <laughs> Thank you. It was fun. Uh, if you have, guys, if you have any questions, if you want to continue this conversation, uh, there is this video will be on, uh, on 40 channel, so you can always ask questions on the chat. Uh, I'm not sure if it will be the same chat as this or just comments. Probably it will be different. Uh, I'm, I'll be happy to answer anything uh, related or unrelated to this video. If you think that uh, whatever I was doing here will be useful so for someone else who don't know about us yet, uh, please share it with your friends. Uh, it's always good. It's a win-win situation because uh, we love uh, to uh, to see new people who are interested in product photography. And uh, again, it will be helpful for them to understand things that I was showing. Because it's, uh, it's generic stuff, you know, when I was doing these uh, things with diffuser, with lights, you, you, you use it all the time uh, when you shoot in studio, you shoot products. Uh, we can do jewelry, we can do, uh, well, many other things uh, using this technique. <laughs> Ryan has felt out the chair. <laughs> okay, stay tuned. If you're not subscribed yet, subscribe to 40G channel. Uh, once you subscribed and with that uh, real bell, uh, little bell on, you will receive notification when we go online, uh, when we do a live broadcast. Some of the broadcast uh, will be uh, more uh, kind of unpredictable. I may go live just to talk to you, to say hello, but uh, major events like giveaways or contests or whatever will be running, maybe some workshops, uh, it will be scheduled. Uh, you will receive email notification uh, once we schedule it, if you subscribe to 40 g um, uh, emails as well. So you can always go and uh, basically when you create account on 40 g it's, it's like subscribing uh, to our newsletter. Okay. Uh, did I win just fall? You, you almost won. You almost, you are really close, but this time not you. Sorry, sorry, man. Okay, congratulations to Ryan. Thank you, everyone, and see you next time. Have a great weekend. It's Friday. Awesome. So have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy your time. Uh, spend with friends and family, and uh, just remember that life is beautiful regardless of what we think about it. Really, it's all here. So think about good stuff and try to think away from bad stuff. Everything happens here. Okay? Thank you. Bye, and I'm pressing that big red button that we have here to stop broadcast. Love you guys. Bye.